Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Is it time to bring back my most beloved series? This is the video guys, get it to 6,000 likes within 48 hours of my posting this, and I will do Trade Tuesday Season 4. But to kick this all off, and to, you know, kind of tie it all in, why don't we review the guitar that I got for free from Trey Tuesday Season 2. If you haven't been following the channel very long, you're probably very lost. But if you've been following for about two years, you'll know what's in this case. Inside here is the 1996-1997 Fender Coppercaster. So if you're not familiar with my Trade Up Tuesday series, I start with a cheap budget garbage thing that I usually get as like an endorsement deal, like to talk about their product. Like I think this one was a glary instrument or something like that. And I traded my way from there all the way up to a custom shop. We've done that three separate times in Trade Tuesday season one, two, and three. And this was my custom shop fender from season two. I just never got around to do the full review and demo, only the, hey, we did it video. So this is a 1958 Stratocaster reissue. What does a 58 reissue Strat have? Well, it's got the small headstock. This was the year that they changed the neck shape to be more of a slightly D shaped, but some of the earlier ones have more of a V shape, which this one, I would probably categorize it as a very soft V potentially. That's the year when we went from the two color sunburst into the three color one. Though, with this being a special copper burst color, that doesn't really pertain to this particular one. And they had the straight up maple neck. It wasn't like a maple fretboard maple neck, it was just a maple neck. And what made the copper caster run interesting is the fact that A, you have the copper colored finish that you're seeing right here, and then they have this an anodized pick guard. So it's kind of like a metal pick guard right here. You've got a beautifully figured neck. Most of them are bird's eyes and they also have the flame on there with them. And this was a nice neck. It was a fantastic way to go from a Glary to a custom shop fender. And how many of them did they make? It says right here. You've got 30 and this one is number 28 of 30. But what if I told you there was more than one run of copper casters even within the same year? So if you ever see a listing saying, oh, one of 30, these are rare, you never see them. There were more than one run. I've also seen another one that has a run of 40. I've seen a one-off that had like a serial number right here of 01 custom made for insert shop name here. So they're not quite as rare as the serial number might make it seem, but you don't find these things every day. And if I'm going to be honest here, I'm not a big fan of the color. I mean, it's all right. They also made Telecasters like this. You could also check out my like F-hole Telecaster Penny review, that kind of penny copper finish. That's kind of similar to this, but I really liked the neck on this one. That was my favorite thing about it. But when I was looking at this today, doing some research, I was really weirded out. There's no serial number on this particular run. The 28 out of 30 is considered the serial number. I did see one from a run that had a serial number here besides that one that just said 01. So as I was saying, there's a couple different runs of these. But the Fender Custom Shop opened in 1987, so quite a few years before the Custom Shop for Gibson at 1993. So this is roughly 10 years after opening. They're starting to get an idea of what they're doing. And there's a lot of Fender guys who love these 90s era custom shops. And this one actually has a little bit of case candy left with it. So we've got the trim bar here that we can install and then some original paperwork. Start with this little manual here. Standard owner's manual. It's kind of cool to have because it's old. They don't really tell you too much. I mean, this is when they're doing the locking nut system on a lot of stuff. Ooh, the uh, LSR system. That's pretty cool to see. This doesn't have any of that kind of stuff, though. But it does have some setup advice. That's nice. We've got a vintage polishing cloth, something that tells you do not be alarmed. You can set your own instrument up if it doesn't play good. Some additional springs. That's actually nice. And then over here, we actually have a uh, cover for our bridge if we wish to install that. That's pretty cool. And then look at this. We have an original hang tag. That's nice. So brand new, this was $2,550. In today's market, these have been selling for roughly between like 35 to 5,000, depending on condition, how many's on the market. I mean, I bought this thing two years ago, so it's appreciated quite a bit just because of, you know, everything that's going on in the world. And it seems that these also potentially maybe even came with a spare white pick guard to match the back plate if you didn't like the anodized one, at least that's what it looks like. It could have just been somebody put that in the case. But, eh, 
I, I'll, I'll just leave it with the anodized one, I do believe. So to learn a little bit more about this copper caster on this special Fender Friday episode, something that has a light goal to start season four and trade up to another custom shop guitar with another tiny little item, let's go ahead and do this. Inside the copper caster, let's take a look here. So it's a 58 style reissue guitar, so it's got the custom shop pickups in here. See the back side of the anodized pick card here. It's got a custom shop USA Fender sticker on it and our custom shop pickups. Honestly, I'm not sure if these things have a fancy name or not. I didn't see anything online. It I just saw like 58 custom shop pickups. It's like, okay. As far as our body routes, we do have a marking in here. It looks like maybe 359B. I'm sure that means something to someone, but 90s Fender is not a language I speak, unfortunately. That's why when guys are like, hey, you should do some more Fender videos, it's like, I'd love to, but I'm not as knowledgeable on them, so I can't just spit out random facts the entire episode like I can on some Gibsons, you know, vintage and new. That's why normally when I feature a Fender, it's brand new, because, you know, all the information is pretty much already out there, or stuff that I can find. So I'm not really even sure what this body's made out of, to be honest. I can't really even see an area where the wood's exposed, except for, you know, maybe in there. It's a light colored wood, so maybe alder? I'm not sure. But it looks like we're rocking 250k pots on here with a vintage style bridge. Six individual saddles, fender labeled. And we've got all the black shielding paint in case you didn't notice. But within the circuit, bridge pickup reads 6.22k ohms, middle position 6.12, Neck, about the same, 6.07, and then you got your in-between positions, 3.09, and bridge middle, 3.13. Master volume, two individual tones, doesn't look like we have any fancy electronics, push pulls, S1 switches, anything like that. But perhaps another thing that might be unique to a 58 style one is the type of plastics that they use, especially the switch tip. I love the way that feels, it's nice and rounded over. I do want to be forthcoming and honest here. When I bought this guitar, they said that the trem block was stripped. And I took that as this would not actually be able to, you know, secure. But it does. So I'm not sure. Does that mean something else? Because I can still use that just fine. The bridge is very secure, though. Like, it doesn't like to move a lot. But this also came to me with flat wound strings. Like, the neck had a bit of a bow in it. I had to correct that and the frets were not as shiny as they are now. I just got done cleaning those. And maybe that's why I've just never really liked this guitar. I just kind of kept it around waiting for a time that I could do the review of this trophy piece. I would love to keep the Trey Tuesday, you know, trophy guitars at the end, but I've already sold most of them and I, I really don't like this guitar all that much. Like, the color doesn't do anything for me, but I know there's a lot of guys that love this. I've had lots of offers on this guitar. As far as cosmetic condition, there is a chip in the clear coat right here. At least that's what it looks like to me, because you can still kind of see the copper color. It's either that or the wood's just dirty underneath there. But I've kind of just come to appreciate that. It's like a, a beauty mark or a blemish that I just kind of expect on a copper caster now. Other than that, I mean, you do have some light impressions on this. A couple of them on the neck that we'll see here in a minute. It was used, but not abused. Definitely a little bit dirty when it came to me, but now it's looking nice. So moving on from our body, again, one piece maple neck. So that means your fretboard has just as much bird's eye and flame figuring as the backside of the neck. However, this appears to be a vintage style. So we only have 21 frets, regular 25 and a half inch scale length. And I tend to agree with what I saw online of this being a nine and a half inch fretboard radius, because seven and a quarter is definitely way too rounded. But as far as our nut width, pretty skinny, 1.64 inches, and stays thin, 1.99 by the 12th. First fret neck up, 0.85, and stays fairly consistent, 0.92 by the 12th. This definitely feels more like a soft V-shaped neck. Like, it doesn't come to a huge point, but you can definitely tell it's a little bit more rounded than a C. And here's the neck at the 1st fret and the 12th fret. You can kind of see that V-like shape. It almost comes to a point right there and then it just kind of falls off for the shoulders. And then the 12th kind of just has a smaller hump because it gets a little bit wider. As far as the headstock, it's got to be one of my favorite things on this entire guitar. There's a lot of movement within the wood grain right there. You get your vintage style Fender logos right here on the decal original contour body right there but here you can see like maybe a clip-on tuner or something left an impression on the guitar 
and there's a, some sort of a roughen up spot right there. But we've got the vintage style tuners in a single string tree, and this is a version that has the truss rod that you adjust down here. And as long as you remove the pick guard, you should be able to adjust it without having to take the neck off. Now, normally older fenders, you want to completely disassemble them to make sure the parts are original, but you know, I mean, <laughs> Th th that's the original neck. I don't have to take it apart to tell you that. That was one of the specs of the copper casters. All right, I lied. I had to take it apart because I needed to adjust the truss rod. That's why this thing's always felt like crap to play. It's because it has so much of a bow in the neck. The action was so high that needed to be set. So unfortunately, I didn't have that nice Stumac tool that can get in there, so I had to take the neck off. So we might as well document this too. We've got a Fender Custom Shop stamp right there. It says 58 Copper Strats. So even though people call these Copper Casters, they're Copper Strats. And it has a date stamp of October 17th, 1996. Looks like uh, J. Cruz, maybe, for the builder. Kind of hard to tell, it's a bit smudged. And down here, a date stamp of maybe 7 2796 so this is a 1996 copper caster. I always thought it was a 97. And here's what that neck pocket looks like. You can see the custom shop stamp. It looks like you got a bit of a shim and some other stuff going on there. And right here on the neck, you can actually see a little spot where the skunk stripe ends. So I guess if you needed to take the truss rod out, I guess you could rip that out and then fix it if you ever needed a repair on it. Well, I've got it all put back together. Fresh strings. I tried to set it up to play a little better. I think I kind of made it worse because now it buzzes in certain areas, but whatever. If you buy this guitar from me, take it to a professional. Let them do their thing. On the back, you've got that white back plate that I've removed here, so we can take a look at this. Stock from the factory, three springs, something like that. Looks like we have some sort of a sticker right in there. It says 1021 on it, so maybe that was the last time it was set up. That doesn't make any sense because I've owned the guitar longer than that. But the back of the body, it's in good shape. It's got some nicks and dings, but nothing too over the top. Fender Custom Shop neck plate and the backside of our beautiful bird's eye maple neck. Now it does look like we might have some stand discoloration right here. We'll check it out under black light, see if that shows us that any better. And there's a few nicks and dings back here. But now the back side of that beautiful headstock reads number 28 of 30. Fun fact, number 29, it was on reverb not too long ago. It lives in Japan. I guess it could have been shipped out of Japan last time it was sold, but it was in Japan. Now that's kind of cool. I think this guitar looks better under blacklight. So there you can see that small ding I was talking about. Everything else is I mean, looking the way I would expect to see. Even your plastics glow a very cool color. Your neck glows this hue as does your headstock here. Backside seems to match, but let's see. Can we see any stand rash on the neck? Surprisingly, no. But there is some sort of a discoloration on the back of the neck. I don't know what caused it, but there's like a yellowed hue. I guess you can kind of see it if you know it's there. But everything's looking good on this one. All said and done, this one weighs a little bit more than seven and a half pounds. Seven pounds, 8.7 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. All right, let's go ahead and capture the tones. We'll start with our neck position. So far, I think I like the neck and middle the best. Very glassy. The neck pickup's pretty good too for that.
think that gives you an idea for cleans. I, I can't wait to get some distortion on this. That neck pickup's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> setup this definitely plays a lot better than it ever did before <laughs> maybe it's just because it's got regular strings instead of flat downs on it Now that we know all about the Coppercaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? It'll always have a soft spot in my heart and I love the way this neck looks, but honestly, I have a Fender USA that I actually prefer over this. I mean, the tones are fantastic and I'm sure after a great setup, this would just be fantastic and crazy good because I was really digging those neck and neck middle pickups together and that bridge has a lot of bite when you get it on the distorted channel. But I think I'll share with you guys my favorite Stratocaster that I currently own. Maybe next Fender Friday, maybe I'll give it a couple of weeks. But there's something a little bit special about that one. And longtime viewers of the show know what's coming. But this one, beautiful custom shop piece if you like the 58 specs and you like bird's eye slash flame maple necks. Very cool piece, but do I think I should keep this one? Nah, I think I'll, I'll sell this one. Maybe get something else that I would like a little bit better. The copper color at the end of the day just doesn't do much for me, but I know there's a lot of guys that do like this finish. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's very important to do that this time if you want Trade Tuesday season four to begin. All right, take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description. Mm -hmm.